All right, All right, the rest, the rest of us, let's open up our Bibles to 1 John, John chapter, chapter 2. two. We're going to pick, pick up where Marcus, Marcus, Pastor Marcus, Marcus left, left off, off uh, 1 John, John 2, we'll be in verses 7 through 11. Verses 7 through 11. Just want to thank Pastor Marcus, Marcus uh, specifically for, for preaching awesomely while I was gone. It's, it's just good to know, know that, that the Word of God, God is being taught, taught and the people, people of God are being fed. Amen. So thank you, Marcus. Going to miss that. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, Obviously, thank you to everybody, everybody else. else. It, was it was good to be, be away, away, to tell you the truth. truth. Um, um, and and I, had, I had a good time, good time refreshing, refreshing in many, many respects, respects at the same, same time. time uh, I'm, 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 I'm happy, happy to be where I am at this moment, moment in the Word of God, God with you. where I want to be. And, and so, uh, first, first John chapter, chapter 2, 7, 7 through 15, or 7 through 11, because 15 didn't happen in my study time. Beloved, Beloved, I'm writing, I'm writing to, you, to you, no new, new commandment, commandment, but an old, old commandment, commandment that you have had, had from the beginning. beginning. The, old the old commandment is the word that you have heard. Have heard. And at the, and same, the same time, time it's a new, a new commandment, commandment that, I'm, that I'm, I'm writing, writing to you, you which, which is true in him and in you, because, because the, darkness the darkness is passing, passing away and, and the true light is already shining. shining. Whoever, whoever says, says he's in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness, and whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness, and walks, and walks in the, in the darkness, darkness and does, and does not, not know where, where he is he going, going because, because the darkness, darkness has blinded, blinded his, his eyes. Now, now if, if you're, you're like me, me you're reading, reading John, John and it sounds, it sounds a lot like Yoda. Like Yoda. Um, um, anybody, anybody else? else? You're just, just kind of like, like, what are you saying? <laughs> what are you, what are you saying? saying? But, but if, if we, we look, look at the book of 1 John, John as, as Pastor Mark says, it's like we already pointed, pointed out, but it's very helpful to look at it as a book of proofs. Um, a, a, way a way to see, to see if, one if one is truly in fellowship, in fellowship with, with God, God or, not. or not. How many, How many of you uh, question, question whether or not you're, you're in the faith, faith or not? Actually, actually we're commanded, commanded to question, question ourselves, not necessarily question, 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 question the Lord, but question, question, hey, examine, examine your walk. walk. Find, Find out, out if you're in the faith, faith or not. Are you, are you really, really what, what you claim to be? And are those who are around you in teaching you, are they truly who they claim to be? It's really important. And what, and what was, was happening, happening in, in this, this church, church was that the church was being infiltrated by people who were, who were teaching things contrary, contrary to what, what the apostles, obviously, that Jesus, that Jesus laid out in the church. The church. They, were, they, were the, they, would they would become, become the Gnostics. The Gnostics. And, 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 and without, without going, going into all, all that, that type of stuff, stuff it's, it's about, about what, what you know, know not, not how you live. live. That's, That's kind of, kind of it's, it's, it's just, if you got, got the knowledge, it's good, but if your life doesn't mesh up, well, you've got... Uh, you, uh, know, you know, you can just you can live just however, however you want, and God, God will forgive you. you. And that's, that's just basically, basically the, the, what the impact it had on the church. church. And so and these so false, false teachers, teachers were around them. They were teaching, teaching as they are today, today with different, different things. things. We've, We've got, got a, a, a false, false teaching about love, love which, which we'll get, we'll get into. into. We've, We've got, got false teaching about what saving faith is and the gospel and relationship with God. God's got to be an emotional experience all the time. Otherwise, you have to connect God. There's a lot of things that have infiltrated the church. And John, and John just, just comes in the most, most uh, simplest, simplest and bluntness of ways and saying, saying listen, listen um, I'm, I'm going to give you some proofs to let you, let you know uh, if, you're if you're walking in the, if you're in if you're fellowship, fellowship with the Lord, Lord and, or, if or if you're not, if you're, if you're saved, saved or if you're not, and, and, and there's, there's, my guess is there's a little bit of everything there. There's people who are who are true believers, but they're not walking in the light. And then there's people who say that they're walking as believers, and they're not believers at all. And so he so just, he just wants, wants to bring, to bring clarity. clarity. And we need, and we need clarity, clarity these, these days. days. And, I and I love what, what John, John does, does here. So he gives, so he gives a, bunch a bunch of proofs, proofs without, without preaching everything, everything, everything and everything. Kind of go, go through, through uh, the, the first, first chapter and part of the second, second chapter. chapter. And so, and so John, John sits there and says in verse 6, six he starts with, with great, great clarity. clarity. He gives, he gives them some discernment here. And the first general proof, he says, is our walk. In verse, in verse 6, he says, says if, we if we say we have, have fellowship, fellowship with, with him, him, how many, how many of you say, say I'm, I'm a Christian? Christian. I, I have, have fellowship, fellowship with God. God. I, believe I believe in God. God. If, we if we say we have fellowship with, with him while we walk in darkness, darkness we, we lie and do not, do not practice, practice the truth. truth. Now, now, everybody's, everybody's got to be convicted at this point. point. But, but now, when now, John, John is talking about our walk, what is he talking about? For someone who's foreign and looking at this, what in the world is a walk? A walk, a walk is, is your, your way, way of life. life. 
A walk, a walk is, is your, your motives, motives, your directions, your, directions, your, your patterns, patterns, your practice. practice. That's, 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 that's what, what it is. What's, what's, what's your, your practice, practice in life? life? You know, you we know, go, we go to, to a, a doctor's, doctor's office, office and they have, they have a practice. practice. Why, Why is, is that? that? Because, because there's, there's a pattern, pattern of, of what, what they, they do in their life, life as a vocation. That is, that is who they are. are. And this is saying, what's, what's your walk like? like? If we, if we say, say we have fellowship, fellowship with God, God while we walk, our pattern is pattern after darkness. We've got to know what light and darkness is. Well, we lie. It doesn't make any difference what we say if how we live contradicts that. Does that make sense? Jesus said, said you'll know tree, tree by its what? what? It's fruit. It's fruit. You can you say, say you're a lemon tree, tree all day long, long. But, if but if you're, you're producing, producing oranges, oranges, you're an orange, orange tree. tree. Now, now, when John's, when John's talking, talking about, about walking, he's talking, he's talking, it's, it's a, a metaphor, metaphor for, for the direction, direction of our, our lives. lives. What, what, what are, are our actions? actions? What, are what are we doing? doing? Where are we going? going? It shows who we are and what our fellowship is. With God, with God, right? right? And so, so John, John says in verse 6, if we say we have fellowship with him, with him while we walk in darkness, darkness, we lie, we don't, don't practice, practice the truth. It doesn't, doesn't matter what you say. It matters what, what you do and how, how you live. live. We can we say, say we have fellowship with God, God all day, day. But, but if darkness, darkness is our pattern, pattern then darkness, then darkness is where we are. are. Therefore, Therefore, we don't have fellowship with God. And we're living in a lie. And these believers were told that your walk doesn't matter. Your walk, Your walk doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Boy, Boy, are we, are we being, being told, told that, that today? You can, you can do whatever, whatever you want as long as, long as it feels, feels good, good, as long as, long as it lines, lines up with, up with the, culture, the culture, then, then you're, you're, you're great. great. It's only, it's only what, you, what know. you know. However, However verse, verse 7, we read, read what, what, but if, if we, walk we walk in the light. light. Amen? Amen? If we walk in the light, light is patterned after the light. As, As he, he is, is in the light, light we, have we have fellowship, fellowship with, God. with God and, and with, with one, one another, with, with other believers who are walking in the light. light. We, have we have fellowship. fellowship. And, and the, the blood, blood of Jesus Christ cleanses, Christ cleanses us from, from all sin. sin. So, so proof, proof that we have fellowship with God, God proof, proof that you and I have fellowship with God, with God is that our lives are walking in the light. In the light. Our, our pattern, our trajectory, our habits, all those things are patterned after Christ, his teachings. How many of you are? Convicted, convicted already. already. Amen. Amen. Should, Should be. be. That's, That's the purpose, purpose of John. John. I, am. I am. I was, I was reading this. this. Again, Again, light, light and, darkness and darkness here are metaphors. Metaphors, metaphors, metaphors for, the for the kingdom of God. Of God. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ his, his glorious, glorious son. son. And then and the, the kingdom, kingdom of darkness, darkness the world, the, world, the flesh, flesh, led, led by, by the, the devil. devil. Two, different two different kingdoms, kingdoms light, light and darkness. darkness. Notice, Notice he doesn't say the kingdom of gray. Notice as you're walking in gray. It says you're either, either walking, walking in darkness, darkness or, you're or you're walking, walking in, what? in what? Light. light. John is saying this in the pattern of your life, life is consistent, consistent with the light, with, with Christ, Christ and his teachings, and we have true fellowship, fellowship with one, one another. another. Have you ever, have you ever noticed, noticed that you can be in a room, room like this and be totally alone? alone? Have, you have you felt that way? way? Maybe you're feeling that way this morning. You know, it's interesting that I can fly on the other side of the world Land, land in the, in the middle, middle of, of well, well, land, land in, the in the Philippines, go in the middle, middle of, a, of the jungle, the jungle and meet people, people who, who barely even speak my language, but who love the Lord and walking in the light, and I can have deep fellowship with them and a connection because of Christ, because they're walking in the light. You see, fellowship isn't about getting together and, and getting an emotional thing happening. And making sure you have your felt needs met. <clears throat> Fellowship is about you following after Jesus, me following after Jesus, and by the nature of our relationship with Him, we are connected. And that word fellowship is koinonia. And the idea behind it is what you have, I give to you. Uh, what you need, I give to you out of what I have. And what I need, you give to me out of what you have because I love you. That's what fellowship is. And that's the picture we have of the Father and the Son. I know that, that it gets messy and I can't understand it all. But it's this constant giving towards the other person's welfare, their need, whatever the goodness that flows from God through you to one another. Koinonia. He says we have fellowship with one another when we walk in the light. You want to know what Christ's community fellowship is supposed to be about? Christ. <laughs> It's about a group of people who said, you know what, I'm done with darkness. 
I'm walking in the what? I'm walking in the light. And it's not a subjective light, it's His light, the light of His Word, the light of His Spirit. That's what we were made for as believers, to walk in His light together and to enjoy the love He gives us for one another through the various giftings He's given us. Various giftings in the body. We're all different. We all need each other. I'm up here talking. Maybe when I was away, you felt like a, a need, like, hey, I missed Matt a little bit. Well, I missed you. You know, we need each other. We're going to miss Marcus. That's why I'm a blubbering idiot up here. You know, as I realize that, man, okay, this is what God's doing, but there's just a deep, there's going to be a deep miss. Not for what he does, but just who he is. So, Something amazing happens when we walk together. Do you ever notice that when we walk together in the light, our darkness is exposed? How many of you say you have no darkness? Better read the verse, the next verse. <laughs> what happens is, is our flaws before Christ are exposed. That's what fellowship is about, is we're with each other. We bear with one another. We're long-suffering with one another. And then what happens is we realize that we're in desperate need of the one who saved us from the beginning, Jesus Christ. And what happens when we do that? We come before the Lord, we confess our sin, and he is faithful, First John 1 night, to cleanse us and forgive us of how much unrighteousness? All. How many of you need your all unrighteousness cleansed? Who's the one who's faithful? Jesus. And what do we do? We confess. And so hopefully we're, we, there's a purifying factor that happens when the church gathers together, not a putrefying factor. <laughs> Amen? And what happens sometimes is that when people are walking in the light together, things get exposed and then they, they don't want to go to the cross and, and get fixed, so to speak, get cleansed by the Lord Jesus and walk through that and grow and change. Instead, they split and go to another church. And then they do the same thing over and over and over and over again. So there's a purification that happens. Christ is, is at work in his church. He's purifying us. Listen, church is essential. We are essential. We've got to be together. We've got to gather together. We've got to be in each other's lives. This is the process of Christ. He, he take us, takes us from every tongue, tribe, and nation. Obviously, I'm stumbling over my words, so whatever tribe I'm from, San Diego. He brings us back together, and, and we purify one another as we are walking in the light, and there's this beautiful thing that happens as we continue to follow and seek after the truth, and he grows us up. And what does that look like? We become more like Christ. We become more loving. So that a proof that we are in Christ as we walk in the light, but we also confess our sin. We confess. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is in His church, and there's light there, and light, by the nature of being light, exposes darkness. Amen? There's so much more to say in that. I don't want to reteach things, so go, go check out the last five weeks. But our proof that we are in fellowship with God is, is our walk. And Again, number the second thing, I kind of jumped ahead myself, but another proof is in verse, chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. He says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we have made him a liar, and his word is not in us. So as we walk in the light together, we, can, we are convicted of our sins and we confess our sins. That's why it's important we gather together under the Word of God. That's why it's important we gather together throughout the week. And you know, one of the key indicators that someone isn't, isn't doing well is that they remove themselves from fellowship. You know, when Adam sinned, what did the Lord ask him? Where are you? I got to know where he was. <laughs> it's like parents. Where are you? <laughs> they know exactly what's going on and where you are, right? Why did he ask him that? So he'd come out into the light, right? 
The Lord doesn't desire us to run away, but to run to him and confess our sins. And that's proof that we're walking in the light. We have fellowship with one another. We, have, we confess our sins. And chapter 2, verse 1 gives us um, two reasons that we can go to Christ to confess our sins. Do you know why it's so important? Listen, sin separates man from God. Sin is, is, is living contrary to God's nature and his will. Do you know, it's as simple as that. To violate, that's, you live in contrary in contradiction to who God is, his very character. That's what sin is. And the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short. That's what we do by nature. We live in darkness. But Jesus Christ, the light of the world, came to make dead people alive, to make dark people light in their souls, right? So chapter 2 gives us a reason, verse 1 and 2, gives us two reasons that we can go to Christ. Why? Why can we go to Christ? Well, first, he's our advocate. Talked about that. He's our advocate. What's that? It's, he's our lawyer. How many of you go, I got a lawyer on tap? Yeah, just talk to my lawyer. Very few. Jesus is our lawyer before God. Because guess who comes accusing all the time? The enemy. But notice, it's Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is our advocate. He... he makes our case before a holy God, not based on our deserving it or our good works, but because he just flat out loves us. Do not get it, and we just simply need and abandon ourselves to him in total faith. That's it. And secondly, the reason why we can go to Jesus when we sin is he's our propitiation. As we were talking about propitiation, that's a fun word. It's an important Christian word means he covers our sin. He totally removes our sin. And how did he do that? The innocent died for the guilty, the righteous for the unrighteous. Jesus Christ, the one who lived the life that you could not live, the sinless, perfect life before God, the one who met all the requirements that God asked, the righteous requirements of the law. He lived it. He did. He's my hero. And he died and bled out for me and for you. See, not only is he my lawyer, but he's the one who paid the price for me to go free, for you to go free. Amen? That's why we can go to him. I love it. That's just a bonus there. But another proof in chapter 2, verses 3 through 5, He says, and by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. If we keep his commandments. That's how, that's how you know him. Verse 4 says, whoever says I know him but does not keep his commandments is a what? Is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his what? Oh, his word. Gives you a little bit a clue on what he's talking about there. In him, truly, the love of God is what? Perfected. Those, are God's, those who are God's walk in the light, and they keep his commandments, which verse 5 says is keeping his word. The commandments here are referring to Christ's commands. This is New Testament. We're talking about the commands of Christ, which don't contradict the law of Moses. They fulfill the law of Moses. We've got to know that. He's not saying keep the Ten Commandments. We know that you can't have righteousness by keeping the Ten Commandments. That's, the law is there to show you that you don't keep them. It's perfect. It's just. But Christ says, this is, this is a new commandment. And this is what we're going to get into. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But the commandments here are referring to Christ's commands. But make no mistake, they do not disregard Moses' commandments in the Old Testament. Those walking in the light in fellowship with God who claim to know God, they keep the commands of Christ. That word keep means they guard. Do you guard the word of God? Do you hold it dear? Do you protect it? Do you treasure it? Do you keep it? Are they precious to you? Are they light? Are they life to you? But those who say, verse 4, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And there's a pattern 
of obedience. That's what we're looking for, obedience in the life of a believer. That's, that's, what it, that's what someone who is in the light does, who has fellowship with God. We hear what God says and we say, make it so, Lord. And we, we go after it. And by the power of the Holy Spirit working in us, we fulfill what God has called us to do. And boy, let me tell you, it's a little messy. Amen? Yes. And then John brings them to something that would help them understand what all this looks like. In verse 6, he says, in chapter 2, he says, whoever says he abides in him ought to what? Walk in the same way in which he walked. If we are believers, our walk should look like who? The one in whom we believe, Jesus. That's why they were called Christians. It's actually a mockery term. Back in, someone help me with the place. Where were they? The city that was first called? What was it? Antioch, right, yeah. Antioch. They looked so much like Jesus. They mimicked Jesus in everything they did and said. They called them Christians. Little Christ. Like, look at those little Christ around there. They're just like him. Yes, that's what we're shooting for. Just loving people, walking in truth, in love, in light, in countercultural, in kingdom culture. Amen? The life of a believer should mimic the one they have believed. So you see, John is wielding the sword of the church. He's calling them to evaluate. Hey, are you in the faith? Are you walking? Are you listening to these turkeys? Who are telling you, you can, you know, you can say you're a Christian, but you can live however you want? Or are you holding true to that which you've already known from the beginning? Are you walking after what the Lord told you to do? Are, are you, is your walk in the light? Do you have fellowship with the brothers and, and sisters? And, and, and are, you, are you confessing? Your sin, are you keeping the commands of Christ? Is your aim to please and to fulfill the word of God's will in your life? Is that what's going on? That's the direction of a believer. You see, the world doesn't care about that stuff. They don't care about this. It actually makes them disgusted. They don't care about fellowship in the light. They don't care about being under the word. They don't care about walking in that direction. It's all about self-gratification. We fight against that as believers because that was our old life. This is our new life. And John's saying, listen, those who walk in the light, they walk in the light, they practice the truth, they have a true fellowship with God and others who are walking in the light. When they sin, they confess their sin and they keep the commands of Christ. Their lives have taken on that fragrance and the motives and the passion. They look like Christ more and more and more as they go. These are some of the proofs that you've been born of God, that you are in the faith. Amen? Amen. Now, Right now, you can sense that a lot of you are discouraged. <laughs> Me too. You see, you can't muster this stuff up. That's the difference between religion and relationship. Religion says I can make all this stuff happen. Listen, abide. Our, our job is the same way we came to him is the same way we, what we walk in him. We came to him in desperation, and he filled our hearts with love. We've been born again, and we just continue daily to follow after him and walk after him. And as we do, his spirit is going to be leading and guiding us and empowering us to fulfill what he's called us to do. And he's going to call you to abandon things and pick up righteous things. Amen? Amen. But there were those around them who were walking in darkness, they practiced a lie, they were not convicted of sin, they didn't confess it, they didn't keep his word, they were not walking as Jesus walked. These were all indicators that, that this is not the tree that they claimed to be. Now, this morning as we pick up, I know, that's a great introduction, but it'll be, it'll make sense. This is what we pick up in verses 7 through 11, we're, we're going to see another proof, and this is an important one. Let me read it, and then we'll go back and point out just a few key points. Verse 7, Beloved, I'm writing to you no commandment, but an old commandment that you've heard from the beginning. And the old commandment is the word that you have heard. And at the same time, it's a new commandment that I'm writing to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Listen, 
Whoever says he's in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. But whoever, uh, I'm sorry, in darkness, verse 10, whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there's no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because his because the darkness has blinded his eyes. And, and the proof that John is referring to here is love for our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Do you have a love for the brothers and sisters that surround you right now? Do you have a love for them? Undeserved. <laughs> Just a God-given love. When you see them hurting, do you hurt? When you see a need, do you want to jump out and meet it? Do you, is it there in you? John Painley says that if you say that you're in the light, then it will be evidence in your love for your brother, brother and sisters. Love is the proof that you're in the light. Now, John gets to that conclusion by telling us about the command of God. That's his connection. You walk in the light, you have fellowship, you confess, you keep his commands, and as that thing is working out. The commands of God don't lead to legalism. They lead to love. They lead to love. We got to know that. Verse 5, he already said, but whoever keeps his word or his command, two different words there, but if he keeps it, in him truly the love of God is perfected. It's completed. It, it, it makes its way out. If you keep the word of God, it's going to lead you to love more deeply, more profoundly, less selfishly. So John's logic is that if we walk in light, we're going to have fellowship with one another, we're going to confess our sins, and we're going to keep his commands, and that's going to look like love, plain and simple. And so John says to them, Beloved, I'm writing you no new commandment. This is nothing new. It's an old one. You've heard it from the beginning. Now, John's letting them know that he isn't telling them something they haven't heard. How many of you who've been in church, have heard the command, love one another. Okay, five, seven of you. Okay, we've got some work to do. Great job, everybody. Just couldn't get that hand up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, we know that this is from the beginning. We love one another. That's, that's a command. We, our, our, our vision or our mission statement for our church is, is we love God by love. I mean, we love and obey Jesus Marcus, help me here. Glorify God. Glorify God by loving and obeying Jesus Christ, right? Thank you. I know, it's embarrassing. That's why I write down my sermons. <laughs> Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> yeah. God forgives a lot, but there's consequences. Um, now, there's a sense in which John is, is, is saying that it isn't a new command. And John might be alluding, because he might be talking to some Jews there, he might be alluding to the Old Testament, right? It's an old command. You know that God told you in the Old Testament to love your neighbor as yourself. And if you look at Leviticus 19, and it's, I would highly encourage you to do that in your free time, it's great because you see the heart of God and God's laying out. He says, I am the Lord, I am the Lord, I am the Lord, and therefore do these things. This is how you're to treat one another in this community of believers. So our Jews, <laughs> But he, the essence of it, oh, it comes down to basically Leviticus 19, verses 17 and 18. He says, you shall not hate your brother in your heart, but shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself, I am the Lord. This is how I am. This is who I am. This is how I roll. It flows from my character. I don't do that. You don't do that. So there we have the old command, to love your neighbor as yourself. And these would be their brothers and sisters because they're all descendants of Abraham. And so we see within the law of Moses the command to love your brother. And really, if you look at the Ten Commandments, check them out. I mean, if you, if you look at the Ten Commandments and you look at them, although they're in the negative, 
thou shalt not. How many of you go, ah, I don't like the thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. You shall not. You shall not. How many of you love hearing that over and over and over? Makes you feel great inside. And really, the law shows you what you don't do. You do it anyways. But if you look at them, you can look at them as a bunch of, bunch of rules, but the law is the law, and it is perfect. It reveals God's character. And if you look beyond the thou shalt not, what's underpinning all of that is the very character and nature of God, the very character. You want to know God, look at his law, part of it. Obviously, you look to Jesus, but look, look at his law. Look, at, look what he's telling you not to do. If you were all-powerful, it seems that you'd just be tell everybody to take advantage of everybody. And, you know, I mean, you could do whatever you want, but that's not God's nature. He reveals who He is, and He says there, like the first commandment, talks about, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. There's no room for anyone else. You're not allowed to worship anyone else. Me. Only me. I was listening to a pastor talk about how narrow-minded his wife was. It was, it was really nerve-wracking. I was listening to these She is the most narrow-minded woman I've ever met. So narrow-minded. I mean, she's just unreasonable. And we all started going, what in the world are you talking about? Why are you doing that? He goes, can you believe it? Out of all the women in the world, she wants me to be hers and hers alone till death do we part. I want you to love me and me alone. You see, God's not unreasonable. There's love underpinning there. It's a love for God. And then he goes, don't take my name in vain. If you love the Lord, you're not going to use his name blasphemously, are you? And not only his name, but all that he represents, that's, it's packed into that. We're not just going to talk about God irreverently, are we? If you love the Lord... See, you can try to keep these things, but if you don't love God, it's not going to happen. He goes on, keep the Sabbath. Like, put me first in your life. Put me first in your life, in your week. Set me apart above all else. Amen? Amen. And then he goes on, love, you know, honor your mother and your father. He switches from a love for God to a love for each other. This, this, this direction, that direction first, this direction next. Honor your mother and father. If you do that, you're gonna, it's, it comes with a promise. You're going to live long because generally kids who learn to obey their parents live longer. They don't get shot in the streets. What happens if there aren't parents? That's a whole other issue. I'm telling you, God knows what he's doing. Honor your mother and your father. Mother and father, be honorable. Love God. Well, there's more. Don't murder. If you love someone, you're not going to murder them. Is that pretty common sense? Let's not go kill each other. Well, how about cheating on your wife, cheating on your husband? Don't commit adultery. If you love someone, you're going to be faithful to them. You're not going to ruin your marriage. You're not going to ruin someone else's marriage or life. Don't steal. Don't take what's not yours. Don't do that to other people if you love them. You see, loving your neighbor. Don't lie. Don't covet. See, love is built into the law of God. It's always been his heart. It always reflects his nature. God is a God of love. God's law has always been based upon love. Love for him primarily and secondary for one another. And boy, if you deny that God is in charge, and this is the thing about Romans chapter 1, that if you take God out of the equation and you say he's not in charge of everything and there's no accountability, then you know what? Forget you. Because it's whatever I want. I'm in charge. I make the rules and you exist to meet my needs. And that's how we're living today. We're living in a loveless society. We claim love, but we're lovers of self. That's truly what it is, and we are reaping the benefits of a godless society. 
But Matthew, Jesus comes on in the scene and he reiterates the same thing. Matthew 22, 30, 36 through 40. He was being tested by a lawyer. He said, teacher, speaking to Jesus, uh, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. Love God. Secondly, it's just, it's just like the first. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You all look like you took care of yourselves today. You love yourselves pretty well. Got all your stuff in order. You guys took care of each other. Now go love each other like that. That's what he's saying. And so there's a commandment to love your brother in the Old Testament. John could be referring to that. I always say that because I just wanted to give you the Old Testament foundation. But really quickly, John's saying, hey, it's an old one, but it's nothing new. It's nothing new. You know this. If you lo- say you love God, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna love your neighbor. You're going to keep his commands. But John already said that in verses 3 and 5, that these commands were referring to the commands of Christ. And that's really what he's focusing on, not the Old Testament, but what Christ fulfilled. And by this we know that we have come to know him, chapter 2, verses 3, verse 3. That is Jesus, if we keep his commands. And then verse 5 says, But whoever keeps his word in him truly, the love of God is perfected. You are, if you follow the Lord, you're going to love people more. That's it. And obviously, Jesus didn't contradict the law. We've already talked about. But the law of Moses emphasized what you were not to do. But Jesus came along and emphasized what you were to do. I love this. Jesus said to his disciples, and this is what John is referring to when he says the command. John 13, 34. He's in the upper room. He's going to die the next day. He's spending his last supper with his guys, and he talks about a lot that night. But this is it. John 13, 34. At the last supper, he says to them, a new commandment I give to you. A new commandment that you love one another. Well, what's that like? Just as I have loved you. Just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. And by this, by your love for one another, by our love for one another, church, are we listening? The world, this is our evangelism, our deep love for one another. The love that God shared with the the Father shared with the Son from out all eternity came and pierced this world, and now He's put it into our hearts, and now we love one another. It's our evangelism to one another, how we treat one another, how we love one another, and take care of one another, and all these types of things. And obviously, that doesn't end here. It flows on to our enemies. It flows out. It says, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. That's the key indicator that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. Love. Lord God, help me. Amen? Amen. And it is important to know that this can't be mustered up. It is a fruit of the Spirit. Just as an orange tree produces orange, Christians produce love. That's something you can't make yourself to be. It's something God has to do to you and in you. That's what the cross is about. You realize by the conviction that I don't love. I don't meet up to your standard. I am am not like you, God, and I have sinned against you. And I know that your wrath is focused on me. And his wrath, rightfully so, is focused on those who violate his, his, his very character when his creation rebels against him. But see, he loved us in our sin when we were so far away. And he sent his son into that darkness. He pierced that darkness with his son. He came down, lived a life we couldn't live, healed people, showed people the kingdom of God, and then bled out for anyone who would believe upon him. And when they believe upon Jesus Christ, his death and his resurrection, God does something magnificent. He takes a sinner and makes them righteous. He takes someone dirty and makes them clean. He transfers someone from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light by grace, by God's just good love towards you. It's amazing. And then 
as you are born again, born of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit begins to grow in you because the same nature of God is now lives in you. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, first of all. Love. Love. Love for God. Love for one another. How many of you, when you first came to Christ, man, He changed you. All of a sudden, you had a desire for the things of God. You wanted to, like, follow God. You just didn't know how. Anybody there? Totally. And you're like, man, I can't wait to get in the Word. Like, what in the world happened to me? And you want to read the Bible. And there's a hunger that's happening in there. And then all of a sudden, you want to hang around the same people who do that. You want to hang around brothers, and you're like, going, oh, yeah, did you see that? Did you say, oh, man, God, isn't God good? And you, st- and you still want to pray for one another. And you start going, oh, man, how many of you have sensitive hearts when you used to do stuff all the time you used to do, but then all of a sudden, man, you do that again, and God's like, you feel the conviction. Why? Because you're not of that darkness anymore. You're light now. Amen? And then what do you do? You confess it, and you go to that person and say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Right? Yeah. And, and and there's a change that happens in you because you're walking in the light and there's this love that happens and you desire. You see people hurting around you. You want to go meet that need. It's something that God does. You can't manufacture that fruit. That's religion. Yuck. We don't want anything to do with that. We want to abide in the Lord. Just love the Lord. He came to us and it just flows out of us, guys. And yes, it is sacrificial. And that's the kind of love we're talking about. And John, in that upper room, when he was listening to Jesus, and he saw him wash their feet, and he went out and bled and died that night, or that next morning for him, he, saw, he just turns around and repeats the same thing to this church. He just says, says to him, at the same time, it's, 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 a, it's a new commandment in verse 8 that I'm writing to you. It's the one Jesus said. You know this. And he goes on, which is true in him. It was true in him. He loved and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. It's a beautiful picture of the... And righteousness will be established. Amen. I can't get into all this right now. But we will read in chapter 3, verse 8, that the reason the Son of God appears was to destroy the works of the devil in you and in this world. That's why Jesus came, light into the darkness. And a person who's been born again has experienced that moving from the darkness to the light. Let's, let's move fast here real quickly. The word there for love, how we're to love one another, very subjective of our culture. It's the word agape. This is God's kind of love. It's a sacrificial love. For God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only son. Jesus gave his life for us. It's a sacrificial love. This is the kind of love of God. Jesus was the greatest example of this love. The good news, the gospel, is the message of God's love, for God so loved the world. Amen? The Father sacrificially loved and that he gave his son. Jesus sacrificially died. He gave himself. This is the kind of love that's keeping in the character of God. And sadly, we live in a world that proclaims, well, love is love. And while proclaiming love, the love that people declare in all kinds of circumstance violates the very character of God. The love of God, the love that we are to love each other with, does not violate the character of God. It is in keeping with his character, and it is good, and it is right. True love begins with God, and it's imparted to us through his son, and it does not violate his character. Now, real quickly, I want to just, I want to point some, we're going to stop, because like, you, you guys got the, it's been a while since I've preached, man. I got all this pent up preaching. I'm like, I can just go, wee, 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 with my notes here. I'm going to stop. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter, what love is. Gives you gives you parameters. It shows you, you know, love, what it looks like. And we, we need to know that in action. You can be powerful. You can have all those gifts and stuff. But if you have love, you have nothing. You can burn your body. You can even be sacrificial. You can do good things but not have the love of God in you. And it is meaningless. And he gives us some love is patient, kind. It isn't boastful. It's proud and all this type of stuff. 
John's going to circle back to that. We will too. But verse 9 says, whoever says he's in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Verse 10 says, whoever loves his brother abides in the light. He makes his home in the light. And in him there's no cause for stumbling. Verse 11 says, but whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Don't be fooled. Now, some of you have been going, man, I don't match up. I see a big gap in my life about what, what needs to happen. Well, let me tell you, you need light. And the cool thing is the light has come into the world. And he offered himself for you that you would no longer be of that kingdom of darkness, but in the light. Jesus came and died for you, for your sins, to make you new so that you would be transferred out of that darkness, out of those patterns, out of those things, and the power of Satan, the work of the devil in your life would be broken and the work of God would be established and would never end and you would grow. What do I do? You believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. You confess your sin to God. You say, God, I've been doing religion or I've been doing whatever with this. I, I'm loveless. I fall short. Forgive me. I believe your son died in my place. I believe that he rose again on the third day. And God promises to those who confess it and those who believe it in their heart, it's not just a mantra, you'll be saved. Saved from the power of sin, saved from the presence of sin. Eventually, God is so good. Come to Jesus. And for you who... who, who are, are looking at this going, well, I believe, but I've been, I've got one fist in the gutter and one, you know, foot in the gutter and one fist in the gold. Get your foot out of the gutter and move to the light. Repent, confess, and the Lord will strengthen you again. Amen? Amen. Lord, you're so good. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Christ's community fellowship. Not of our glorious name or fellowship, but because of the Christ over us and the Christ in us. You are everything. And Lord, I pray that you would bring those who know you into closer fellowship. There would be a deep change, Lord, within our lives, God, that we would abandon uh, this teeter-tottering in this culture, that we would be all in and that it would result not in legalism, but in love, but a, a love according to your truth. Father, for those on the outside, bring them in. Bring them into your glorious kingdom of light and love through your Son. Thank you for this place. And Lord, we just lift up the quarters to you. What a precious family, Lord, you've gifted us with. It's been so awesome to watch you work. All glory to you. Lord, as, uh, as they go, Lord, as we've already prayed, watch over them. Give them a special just... Uh, just let them know you're with them on the way, God, <laughs> in just the ways that you do. And uh, I just pray this time of fellowship would be sweet. Be with the deaners as well, Lord. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good to see you again. Uh, and bless the food, Lord, as you always do. <laughs> Amen.